here is my 2014 dual cab Toyota Land Cruiser 79 series. Now it's an absolute rig of a vehicle. Now you wouldn't have seen too much about this one. It's been on the odd forward of action video, but we have never gone into full detail of how I built it and more importantly why. So today, we're gonna to take you right through this vehicle and show you exactly what makes it tick. Now firstly, why a 79 series? Now, a 79 series has always been one of my dream vehicles. Now, I wanted something powerful. I tow a big plate boat, and I wanted something very capable to tour around Australia. Now, this ticked all the boxes for me, and it's um, the perfect platform to modify and uh, make it exactly how you want. Now, the 79 series, of course, has more modifications and accessories available than just about any other vehicle. I reckon it supports about 30% of the four-wheel drive industry. They're that popular out there. Now, they're a very expensive vehicle. Um, a lot of people ask me what I recommend a 79 series for them. Now, firstly, I'd probably say no, that might shock you. Might be a little bit controversial, but the reason why is because I don't believe they are very good value for money vehicles. Now, they're not that comfortable, they're not that powerful when they're stock, but if you do modify them and accessorize them, well, you can make them the ultimate four wheel drive. But that, of course, costs a lot of money. This one here is a good example of where you've got all the right modifications to make the vehicle work really well, especially for my needs. Now, I suppose the first big question, why a 79? Out of all the four drives in the market, why did I pick this as my dream rig? Now, firstly, I needed a vehicle that could tow. I used to have an old 80 series, and that thing was an absolute beast to drive. It was super capable, absolutely loved it, but it did struggle towing the big plate boat up the big hills and doing the big long distance driving. This thing here does it all with ease. Now, I think this is a perfect platform to build the ultimate tourer. So starting up front, of course, we've got the TJM bull bar, we've got the rails and the side steps. Now, I reckon they look really good on the vehicle, but of course they're really strong and they do protect the vehicle. I definitely wouldn't own a four-wheel drive without a bull bar, of course. I do a lot of outback driving with this one here, and um, roost strikes are a real possibility. The side steps, of course, will protect the sills and also give you a little step platform. Um, I'm not that tall, so it helps me get to the roof really easily as well. Now, the spotties that I've chosen for this vehicle are the Libert Hyperdrive Mark IIs. Now, these are a nine-inch light. They're LED and they're um, super crisp. Now, what I mean by that, they actually have optics inside the light that um, help you for that long-distance driving. They shoot a really good beam down the road. And unlike some other lights, they don't reflect off the signs, which makes it easy to drive at night and um, less taxing on your body. Now the UHF aerial I'm running is a GME 6.6 dB aerial. Now that's a good all-round aerial, I reckon, for anyone who does a little bit of every type of four-wheel driving from the mountain sort of stuff to the outback. Um, I get great communication with this and um, paired up to that, of course, is the XRS GME. Um, a fantastic little UHF, one of the best ones I've ever used. Um, moving on to the winch, I'm running a Dominator X winch. Now, this is an older one, I've had it in the vehicle for a couple of years. The sticker is a little bit faded, but trust me, it is a Dominator X. Um, I've used this in anger quite a few times in the old 79, and then a good quality winch. Because my vehicle does weigh 3.2 tonnes, it is very important that I have the right winch for this type of vehicle. Now, if we jump into the engine bay here, I haven't done that much, but I'll show you around anyway. Now, inside the engine bay, there's nothing that different from a standard 79 series, except for a couple of careful mods that I reckon every diesel owner should do. Now, first up, I've got the catch can. This is a Pro Vent catch can. The other really important mod is a Direction Plus fuel filter. Now this is a secondary filter, it goes in before the main filter, so if I do get any water or particles in there, it's gonna catch it. It's also got a water trap light, so I've got a little LED on the dash. If there is water in there, it'll alarm me so I know to stop. You'll notice I've got a stainless steel snorkel, that's a Bud's Custom stainless steel snorkel. And the four inch snorkel, of course, runs into the standard airbox. Now, it has been well documented on 79 series that the standard airbox isn't exactly dust proof. What I mean by that, it can let dust in in some circumstances, which can go into your engine and actually dust the engine. You'll be up for a full engine rebuild. Now, thankfully, that hasn't happened to mine. I do run good quality Man and Hummel air filters in here, and um, perhaps that's even protected it. But it is on my wish list to get another um, airbox for this one. Um, you'll also notice that I'm only running one single battery in here. Now, this is a Sentry battery. It's basically to crank the vehicle and to winch from. My spotties are also connected, as well as the UHF. Um, all of my auxiliary power is in the back, in the canopy. So, I only run one battery in here, and that's plenty to start the big 79. Um, you get yourself one good quality battery. It'll do the job. In terms of power, um, I've done the basic mods, I suppose, for a 79 series. When they come out factory, on the dyno, they make about 100 kilowatts at the tyres, which is not a lot for a V8 uh, turbocharged diesel. So what I've done here is a uh, custom tune on this vehicle. It's got a um, two-inch crossover pipe. It's also got a five-inch dump pipe from GSL and um, in one of their four-inch uh, straight-through exhausts. Now, sounds really cool, but it gives it a little bit more power, lets it breathe. 
Um, the big problem though, if you're chasing any power out of a 79 series, you're also gonna be up for a brand new clutch because the standard clutches on these, well, they don't hack any power. In fact, you probably can't even tune a standard 79 series with extra power on a dyno because it will start slipping the clutch straight away. And I've actually heard stories with 10, 20,000 kilometers on the dash and the clutches are absolutely fried if they get um, some extra power. So of course, I've gone heavy duty clutch. I've got a 1300 uh, Newton meter um, aftermarket clutch in this one and um, it does the job really nicely. I strongly recommend, if you're thinking about getting a 79 series, to um, increase the power because it makes them so much more drivable. If, you see, with a 79 series, you're gonna be putting a lot of extra weight on there. They're a dual cab ute. You're gonna be carrying, whether it's a load in the back, you put a canopy on, you might be towing a boat. You're gonna need that extra power. So a nice, safe, reliable turn is the way to go on these things and it makes them a lot more drivable too. Now, if you're chasing big power out of these, and you can get big power out of these, you've got to do a lot more um, mods. I reckon I've gone the basic route with, with um, power, and as a result, I've got about 170 kilowatts at the tyres on 35s and about 600 newton metres. I find that very, very drivable. If you want to go to the next level, and a lot of people have, you've got to change things like the injectors. They put 30 plus or even 70 plus injectors, aftermarket turbos, aftermarket front mount intercools and stuff like that. And yeah, you can get the 300 plus horsepower out of these things, but I don't really see a need at this stage this does everything i want and when i've got the boat on the back or i put a camper trail on the back i can overtake people on the highway and i reckon that's very drivable in my um, opinion anyway now i just started to tell by now a 79 series doesn't come with that much from factory in fact they don't even have bonnet struts now these are aftermarket bt struts did these ones and um, these are phenomenal if you ever felt the weight of one of these 79 series bonnets they're, they're bloody heavy so this makes it really easy. You'll find with the 79 series, there is anything you can think of from the, the mirrors, through the steering wheels, through the center consoles, bonnet struts, you can get everything aftermarket. So think of a 79 like a renovator's dream. It's just the perfect canvas to build your ultimate dream for wood drive. Now, when it comes to wheels and tires, I'm running a set of um, X3s by General Grabber. Now, these tires are fantastic. I've got them on all my vehicles. Um, I find they work really well on-road, off-road, and you get good mileage out of them, which is very important if you're gonna make that sort of big investment on a mud terrain tire. Um, these are ATX wheels. Sadly, these don't come into Australia anymore. A lot of people ask me where you get these from. Um, they don't bring them in anymore, which is a bit of a shame, because I reckon they look pretty cool. Now the big question, I suppose, why am I running 35s on this vehicle? Now, as you probably heard at the start, I said this is a touring vehicle. I've never met this vehicle to do any sort of hard, tough sort of tracks. Now, I went 35s because of the gear ratios on these 79 series Cruiser, is they rev really hard in fifth gear. So you'll be doing about 110 on the highway, and these things are doing nearly 2,500 RPM. Um, the 35s actually drop that back a little bit, so it changes the final drive ratio and makes it a lot better on the highway. So that's one of the main reasons I actually went for the 35s as opposed to a set of 33s. And um, to fit those in, of course, I needed a, a, a bit of a suspension lift. I've gone about a three inch lift, two to three inches, sagged a little bit now. Um, I've got all the superior engineering arms. I've got some remote res shocks and um, I like the way it's set up, even though it has sagged a little bit. It's, um, it provides a good all, all round. It flexes a little bit off road, not that much, you know, good for a 79 series. But uh, more importantly, on those outback roads, um, it's very, very comfortable. Now, when I got my 79 series, I probably made the mistake that most 79 series owners make in that I went for the biggest canopy I could chuck on the back, filled it full of stuff, and wondered why that my 79 series handled like an absolute pig. Now, the reason why is because the axle is typically right up at the back of the, the cab here, and all of the weight hangs behind that that axle. Now when you're setting a vehicle up for weight distribution, that is probably the worst way you can set a four-wheel drive up. Now the reason of course is all that weight behind the axle lifts the front up, you'll have really light steering, it'll handle like an absolute pig off and on road and um, also can be quite dangerous. Now, I went to Cape York with my setup with a big canopy and all the rest of it. Um, loved the fact that I carry so much. I had a slide out with a barbecue. I had everything that opens and shuts. The problem was it was about a 500 kilo heavier setup than it is right now. Um, it handled really poorly in Cape York. It lifts huge tyres and in fact it was just a bit unsafe. So as soon as I got back I went for a complete change up on the canopy setup. Now I took the, the big canopy off and I wanted a lightweight setup that could do the job of a tourer but also make the vehicle drive really nicely. One of the main modifications that I did and I absolutely love it and I reckon every 79 series owner should do the same 
is the chassis extension. I did a 300 mil chassis extension. It seems pretty crazy that you gotta cut a brand new vehicle in half, extend the chassis, but it just makes them drive so much nicer and it allows them to handle a lot more weight. So if you wanna use your 79 series or maybe tying a big caravan, having a big canopy on the back, I think it's not a, not a nice thing to have the 300 mils. I think it's an absolute must. So mine's got bracing all through the chassis. As you can see, the axle now sits out from the cab. Um, I think it looks in proportion still. And of course, we've designed this canopy and tray set up to actually suit the chassis extension. The canopy and, and tray was made by Customer RV. Um, I sat down with Darren, we actually designed this on to suit my exact needs, to make it lightweight. I wanted to be able to carry some stuff in like a half tray, but also have a half canopy so I can keep things like my fridge and um, all my touring sort of mods, camping gear out of the weather and, um, and stored up really nicely. So this is all aluminium as well. Um, again, I was in that, I just wanted to save as much weight as possible. Um, so it's all aluminium um, in here. It's about 900 wide, the canopy. On this side here is the actual dog box. So I've got a couple of dogs at home. Um, when I'm traveling, I like to take those guys with me. They go into here. This actually rolls right up. So the dogs can get, um, they can get a little bit of a breeze as I'm driving along. But also notice that on the side here, I've got another little air vent that allows air to come in and out, circulate, and keeps the dogs happy. Um, also inside here, when I'm not taking the dogs, I can fit a stack of storage in, inside here. So I can actually run an, a second Waco in here if I need to and make that into a full dedicated freezer. Um, you'll also notice that I haven't really missed anything when it comes to creature comforts. Even though it is a lightweight, small setup, I've still managed to fit all the touring mods. Check this one out. This one here, I've got an actual hot and cold water shower um, that goes, sort of hooks up here. This is one of those modifications I didn't really even ask for. I was quite happy with a 20 litre Jerry to have a little shower at the end of the day or even to swim in a creek. But Darren insisted from Custom RV that we needed to have a shower in here. So of course in true Darren style, he went all out, got a custom built PVC shower cover and um, it works really well actually. Um, the Miso loves it. And um, more importantly, um, you can have a shower on those big trips away, which I think is really cool. And um, the fact it's got a beer holder, heck, sign me up. You'll also notice that underneath the tray on both sides, I do have some cool, neat little storage. Um, fantastic for hiding little bits and pieces in there, like straps, recovery gear. I've got a couple of drag chains, also some oils, brake fluid, just little bits and pieces that you need. You go around to the back of the tray, so the first thing you'll notice is I've got a full slide out drawer. Now this is really handy. What I usually keep in here is all my tools and stuff like that. So this is a quite a large drawer. Gives you heaps of space, heaps of storage, and all your tools and stuff can get away from your camping gear, which I find is really cool. You'll see a reverse camera. This plugs into my Alpine um, head unit. Inside this tray, I carry a lot of stuff in here, whether it's camping gear, firewood, or just general items around my house. Um, I've gone for a Raptor coating inside here because it's a really durable type of paint. Um, you'll also see that my spare tyres are mounted at the back of the canopy. Um, I used to have the spare tyres when I had the full canopy, of course, hanging over the back. That's one of the worst things you can do, I reckon, for a 79 because, again, it puts all that weight right at the back of the vehicle. Um, 235s with wheels is a lot of weight and um, I reckon it's just too much weight to have on the back of a canopy. So I've tried to chuck those again in the middle of the vehicle here. So try and get that weight distribution. Like I said, I use this as a daily driver all the time. So I'm always carrying things, whether it's a couple of bales of hay, uh, some chook feed, just basic stuff around the house. Um, I find this a good all purpose rig. Now over on this side of the tray, very similar to the other side in that it's got under tray storage. In this side, I just keep um, a couple of drag chains. I've got a few ratchet straps. Also, I've got the pump for my water tank. I've got a 70 litre water tank in this vehicle. Um, the pump also has a little uh, two-way valve here, so I can, by this little hose, use the water out of a jerry can or a bucket. So, say I'm having a shower or I'm, um, you know, need some extra water around camp, I can easily do that. In fact, if I extend this hose and go down to a creek or something like that, I can actually fill the tank up with a creek or um, use that creek water for a hot shower. I reckon that's a neat little trick and something that's really cool and unique about this vehicle. We've been able to retain um, the sort of Toyota factory style clamps that hold this um, little tray together. What's cool about that is very easily I can open that up and actually remove all of the tray sides from this, um, this tray. So it does give me a lot more versatility when it comes to using the tray. It's only a half tray so you've got to really maximise 
all the space you can. You know, that's the thing when you're building a vehicle that's um, a bit of a compromise. It's a half canopy, half tray. It's not a full size canopy, nor is it a full size tray. So you've got to try and maximize every little piece of it to get the most use out of it. Now, if you move into here, this is where I keep, it's essentially the main camping headquarters. You open this, this up, and what you'll see in here, of course, is my fridge and my 12 volt setup. Again, really important for any touring four wheel drive. And again, I haven't really skimped on anything. I've got all the main things you need in a big touring four wheel drive, and uh, I've been able to do it in a small, confined space. Now, first up, what you're gonna see is the Clearview Easy side. Um, this one's a 220 plus. It's really big, because I've got a big Dometic 74 litre fridge freezer. Now, I really like this one here. This is the ultimate fridge freezer combination in my opinion because when you're off road, you can set one side to a freezer, one side to a fridge, vice versa. Um, it gives me heaps of room. I want to carry food, beers, frozen meat. It's all, um, I can carry it all in, in this one outfit. Now let's have a quick look at the 12 volt setup. Now as you can see, it's really, really neat. I'll get this out of the way. This here is a um, clear view cable saver. Now it's just got a magnetic base. It keeps that cable up nice and high so you don't pinch the cable with your fridge or drop down slide. We'll get that out of the way so you can actually see the 12 volt unit though. Um, in here we've got a Red Arc 50 amp BC DC. Now that is the heart of my whole operation and what makes that really cool is it grabs 50 amps from my alternator and chucks it at my two auxiliary batteries. So really fast charging. You don't have to be driving that long after being at camp for a couple of days to really ch recharge those batteries. And speaking of batteries, I've got two Century batteries, AGM ones, but you can't even see them because they're hidden underneath the chassis rails. Now, the reason I've done that is I've used every available piece of space. Now, batteries, as you know, are quite big. They're quite heavy. Now, I simply didn't have room in this canopy. If I did, I'd be um, eating up some valuable space that I like to keep camping gear. So, we've made a custom little um, cradle underneath the chassis rail and used a little void space um, to hold those batteries and keep them well out of the way. Again, that weight is between both of the axles and down nice and low, which I think is the key to building any four-wheel drive. Um, on here, you'll see the display unit. Um, this is cool because I can see exactly how much charge is going in, how much discharge is coming out if I'm using um, things like my fridge. Um, I've also got a solar panel, a Red Arc 150 watt solar panel that's um, fixed on top of the dog box here. Um, that just feeds um, my batteries, keeps them topped up at all times. In fact, the 150 watt solar panel is the perfect um, size to keep my fridge running full time. I haven't actually turned the Dometic off for probably a year and a half, I suppose always running and that's because the solar will keep um, trickle charging. Even if I go away four weeks up in Cape York with uh, Sooty My 80 series, this fridge is always turned on and um, doesn't skip a beat. Now the other thing you'll notice is my 12 volt is really neat. Now I love having a good quality 12 volt system because you don't want it to let you down when you're out in the bush. This one here's been put together by Pro Touring Concepts, my mate Caleb. Um, he's very fastidious when it comes to making sure that everything's lined up and really neat. The bonus about just looking really good is the fact it's really easy to diagnose. I've got all my um, circuit breakers, resettable circuit breakers on here, so if there's any issues, I can really quickly diagnose it. You'll also notice that my fuse block is easy to access and everything is labelled, so if I do blow a fuse, again, very, very easy to troubleshoot. Um, also, I've got all my switches here, so when I get into camp at night, if I want to get some lights on, it's the first switch. I find that really easy, bang. Um, this one here is just an LED strip. I've got them on the other side of the dog box as well via this switch. A really cool thing is I can actually dim that light off and on. And also by pressing this button, I can change it to an amber light. Um, if the bugs are around in force, you know, all the gnats and mosquitoes and moths and stuff like that, you change it to amber and they're not actually attracted to that light. Now, inside the Big 79 series, I've got a couple of key mods that make this a lot nicer to tour out of. Now, of course, a 79 series is a commercial vehicle. So when you buy any sort of commercial vehicle, they're not built for comfort, they're built for mine sites, farms, basically rough and tumble, agricultural vehicles, but you can, luckily, modify these things to make them a lot nicer to drive on uh, our back roads and stuff like that. Now the first big modification that I recommend to every single 79 series owner is a set of aftermarket seats. Now these ones here are Stratos suspension seats. What's really cool about these not the fact that they're really comfortable, and they are, is the fact that they actually have springs and shock absorbers, just like your suspension under your vehicle in your seat. So when you're driving down rough roads, you can actually fine tune them via a little knob on the side here to see how much dampening is in the seat. So it makes it for a really comfortable ride, and they're really supportive as well. They hug the sides of you, and um, so much nicer to do a long distance drive. Now I regularly take this on a thousand kilometer plus days of driving, 
and um, doesn't matter where I am on the toughest tracks or um, just on the, on the highway, I find this really nice to drive. Now another cool little thing that uh, I've done in this vehicle is I've put some sound deadening on the back wall and um, on the doors here. These vehicles are really loud. Um, they're really loud from induction noise from a stainless snorkel, as well as um, a big exhaust pipe, which a lot of uh, 79 series owners seem to do. The sound deadening does make it nice and quiet inside. Gives it a little bit of refinement, and um, so you can listen to a bit of music or um, even um, talk on the Bluetooth phone and actually be heard, which is a cool thing. Speaking of music, now again, these vehicles don't come out with a very good sound system. In fact, it's probably the worst sound system out of any vehicle to ever hit the market after the late Model T Ford. What these have is um, two four-inch speakers factory that are facing, they're in the dash and they face down at your feet. So that's the sound system that comes with the 79 series. Of course, I've modified mine. I've got an Alpine head unit. It's got, um, it's got maps, it's got um, Bluetooth, all the cool stuff that you expect out of a modern um, your big screen on here, but I've also got two um, Type R speakers on, on a custom door, pockets made by Cruiser Consoles, and um, a little tweeter as well, so just two inch speakers. Um, there's also a sub and an amp behind the, the rear seat. That basic setup there has changed the sound on this vehicle. Uh, again, I do a lot of kilometres in this vehicle, so I need it to be, be nice on the, on the road. Another thing you'll notice is the centre console. Of course, that is not factory, that's aftermarket, and a really, really cool upgrade for these 79s. Um, the standard one, of course, is just a tiny little box that you can't even rest your arm on. This is a lot higher and a lot wider. Super comfortable if you're driving on a rest your arm. But also, it's going to seem like a really silly little thing, but it comes with two cup holders. The standard ones come with one, I think two cup holders is a must on every vehicle. Um, it's also got a lot more storage. I keep all sorts of stuff in here, so it's really handy for when I'm driving. It's also got an extra um, 12 volt socket, plus um, two USB um, sockets as well. A couple of USBs and um, a couple of SIG sockets on the back here as well. Um, not that I really need to use those, but it's cool to have. Um, I've got some floor mats in here by um, TrueFit. Again, trying to keep that interior clean, no matter if I'm driving on the sand or in the mud, just trying to keep everything nice and clean. Speaking of that, I um, usually run some black duck seat covers. These ones here are the old uh, canvas ones. Um, the dog sometimes jumps on the back when it's not in the dog box and um, want to keep those seats in good, in good condition. And the last thing to probably talk about inside the interior is the um, clear view mirrors that I've got on the side here. Now these um, are way different from the um, factory ones in that they give you so much more vision. Like I said, I tow a big plate boat, so being able to see what I tow is really important. And um, these are also the power fold mirrors, so they can actually fold in via the press of a button uh, when you're on tight tracks or something like that. And of course they can extend out, so you can actually see what you're towing. Good if you've got a caravan or a boat like I've got. Up on the roof, I've got a slimline roof rack. I find that really handy because I can carry more stuff up on the roof like swags and uh, other camping gear. But it also gives me a great platform to mount things like my awning, which is a two by three metre Adventure Kings awning, and uh, also my Max Tracks. Here you go, there's a detailed look at my 79 series. And I've got to say, I absolutely love this vehicle. I reckon when a 79 series is modified right, it is the ultimate four-wheel drive. It's a perfect platform to build your dream four-wheel drive, and I've done exactly that. Now, hopefully, you've learned a lot about 79s through this little video here. Um, and maybe it's even giving you the inspiration to do some cool mods on your very own four-wheel drive. Either way, though, if I have missed something, make sure you hit the comments below because I'm keen to go through all the comments and answer as many questions as possible. And like always, if you did like this video, we've got some great stuff in our channel. Make sure you like our page, subscribe, and turn your notifications on so you don't miss a second of the action.